today um, today I'm gonna discuss uh, painting the Mars uh, Vietnam Marines um, and the first thing I guess I should do is address the paints um, I know there's uh, some newer paints out there um, like those uh, AK colors and they have a lot of uh, they look like they have a pretty wide range of shades of olive drab um, <clears throat> but I don't know how those you know if they're more optimized for airbrushes or what I don't have any of them and I have lots of Tamiya paints some of which are ancient <laughs> from the 80s and they're still good so I use my Tamiya paints and uh, the first thing I knew I was gonna have to deal with is this Tamiya olive green is not I'm convinced this is a armor color it's a vehicle color uh, like the Gunza Sangyo paints I think mostly the Tamiya colors are vehicle colors because this is this this Tamiya olive green is not the right well it's just too dark um, I don't know if you can tell there it, it's just um, the first figures I painted I just opened the bottle and I painted their uniforms that Tamiya olive green and it just doesn't look right so what I did was I mixed I mixed some of the Tamiya uh, medium gray with it and got a much better color um, I don't know if you can see there but the guy on the right has the mixed paint and it's a lighter mixing it with the medium gray makes a lighter uh, olive green that I think is right on I think that's right on um, having um, owning a lot of this stuff a lot of the OG 107 uh, fatigues and jungle utilities I just knew that that to me olive green is just too dark I think it's it's for vehicles um, this is the reference this is the reference that is a must I think for uh, collecting or painting Vietnam figures uh, Kevin Lyles Vietnam US uniforms and color photographs it's a beautiful book it's out of print but uh, it's it's just a wonderful resource I started collecting uh, I started collecting this stuff back in the 90s when I was finding a lot of it in thrift stores and um, this is just a great resource there are, there are some books some newer books by a French guy uh, of Vietnam uniforms I don't know how good those books are but I can definitely recommend this one if you can find it um, at any rate um, I have a lot of this stuff and as you can see that I think uh, the uh, mixing the medium gray with the to me a olive green is what gives you the right color I think I got this this is not a marine utility it's a cap it's a navy um, it doesn't have the EGA on front but it's the same material it's OG 107 sateen and as you can see it's not it's not that dark so um, yeah you want to mix this um, and as far as the uh, the helmet covers go that was the next thing I had to mix something for the uh, the wine leaf helmet covers are kind of a light 
light green with uh, olive green and dark green and uh, kind of an ochre colored leaf design on them. Um, you'll see people calling it a Mitchell camo cover, but I don't think that's right. I think the Mitchell pattern is the one underneath it. On the other side of it, the, the brown pattern is the Mitchell pattern. This is properly, I think, known as the wine leaf pattern. And uh, as you can see on the cover of the book, when it fades, it's, you know, all this stuff, when it fades, it looks different. Obviously, it just loses its, uh, you know, it looks almost solid. But anyway, um, I painted them up like they were new. And to get that light green color, I mixed the Tamiya yellow green with some of the Tamiya flat green. And uh, if you mix it up, you know, you can make it lighter or darker. But I, I think that's pretty much it. And then I did the leaves, the, uh, the wine leaf shapes in... Uh, the mixture of uh, olive green and medium gray and uh, oh I think it I forgot to bring it out but I think it's the Tamiya deep green it's a Luftwaffe color the Tamiya deep green or uh, what was it black green I can't remember I Anyway, I did that. I used that color for the darker uh, wine leaf shapes on the helmet, and uh, I used a uh, a tester's color. I think it's their depot tan color for the uh, for that ochre color that uh, you see on the the wine leaf pattern helmet covers. And um, for their gear, uh, you know, the gear, the gear is more or less the same color as the uniforms. Um, but uh, you can add, what I did was add a little uh, RLM gray to make it darker or medium gray to make it a little lighter uh, so the gear would look a little different from the uniforms um, this guy I think I use a testers olive drab and I'm really not really not crazy about the way that looks um, but uh, uh, on to the uh, some of the figures I didn't think about this when I made the first video just examining the figures when I got them but some of these figures are odd and uh, don't make sense to me the officers I mean he's a good figure you know he's sculpted well and he's in a good pose, but he's got an M3 submachine gun. As far as I know, the only people that got an M3 submachine gun in Vietnam were tank crews. So I don't know why the sculptor chose to give him an M3 submachine gun. But he's not the oddest character. The oddest character is this dude right here. The guy with the M1 carbine. Um... As far as I know, when the Marines came ashore at Da Nang, they all had M14s. I, I associate the M1 carbine more with the, the Army advisors pre-1965. So this figure is kind of a, an anomaly. And not only that, it's obvious the sculptor intended for him to have the sateen fatigues. Um, you can tell 
You can tell he was meant to have those by the pocket design and everything. But then he added cargo pockets, like it was jungle utilities. So that's doesn't make sense. So what I did with this guy, I just decided, well, he's this is an army figure. He's got the H pattern harness. That's an army thing. The Marines didn't get those till later. So what I did was I cut the cargo pockets off and I just painted him up like he's an early army advisor and gave him a parachute material helmet cover. Um, anyway, yeah, that's the oddest figure in the bunch. And then there's this guy. What I thought was the Marine Recon figure, one of them. This guy's a Navy SEAL. And the reason why I say that is because it's obvious he's wearing the experimental ERDL Navy SEAL Radio Man's jacket. That's exactly what this is. Um, got pockets on the sleeves and it's got this odd pocket arrangement on the front of the jacket that's exactly what that is it's the radio man's jacket for the seals I'm pretty sure marine recon didn't get anything like that um, but th the sculptor went to that trouble um, but he didn't add the pockets on the shoulders and in the back and then that jacket had that. So, yeah, this is another odd one. Um, this is my attempt to duplicate the, the lime green ERDL. It's, it's certainly not perfect, but, you know, that's a hard, that's a complex pattern to duplicate on these small figures. Anyway, the colors, I used the... Uh, the to me a yellow green mixed with flat green uh, to get the lime green base to the pattern and um, then I use the flat green and this testers roof brown for the greens and browns and I think that's pretty right on I uh, probably could have added more of the green to it. And I didn't bother with the little black uh, parts to it because they're so small. You know, they're not like a woodland w BDU camo uh, where the black parts are big. Um, hello. So, I don't have a brush small enough to do that on the uh, the leaf pattern or the ERDL pattern whichever one we used to call it leaf pattern um, so yeah there's this guy he's he's an odd kinda neat figure you know but odd um, having subsequently seen uh, seen the Mars Special Forces figures and seen how some of them are really odd. Uh, odd choices for Special Forces figures. I kind of, it allowed me to put these into perspective. Um, so you're getting some odd ones. I don't know, you know, I would much rather have had a radio man instead of this guy. But, uh, anyway, you know, they're good figures um, there's a there's a little bit of excess plastic I had to trim some of the bases on them to get them to to stand um, yeah I painted the M16's gray because that's you know uh, 
that's what I remember some of the early M16s being like, because when I was in the Air Force, I know I got some old ones. And I recall them being kind of a flat, a flat phosphate gray. Um, but I have seen pictures of early M16s that were black. So you could go either or. I chose to do it in the gray with a semi-gloss black furniture. Uh, I remember getting an M16 in the Air Force that had uh, red Bakelite furniture painted olive drab. And it was ancient, you know, it had a three-pronged flash hider. It, it had seen a lot of use. Um, but it, it was, look out, hon. It was an unusual one. Um, and the guy with the M14, he's one of my favorite figures. He's got a smoke grenade on his web gear. That's cool. Anyway, yeah, I've, I've seen Army M14s up close and personal. And as I remember, they the metal parts were kind of a dark gray, flat gray. Um, so, I think I've covered all that I wanted to talk about. You know, obviously I haven't finished painting them. I still don't have a paint for flesh that I like. Um, maybe you have some better ideas on paints than I do. Like I say, I've got all these old Tamiya colors that I still, you know, have had since some of them since the early 90s. Um, anyway, um, Next, I'll be looking at the uh, the Toy Soldiers of San Diego uh, Vietnam figures. I still have them. I got them in the winter, and I haven't opened them yet. So, that'll be next time. <laughs>